Hi, it's Jane with Scraptastic Yarns Podcast. Today is Monday, July the 30th. Um, I am filming this a day early, although I don't think I'll get it put up until tomorrow afternoon, simply because I would like to add the footage from the fair so that you can see that. Um, our local fair, it's a pretty small one. But sometimes, you know, there's quite a few items out for display. Um, don't know what to tell you other than, well, I have to wait until tomorrow to find out what happened. And even then, after I get those items back, um, you know, the following uh, Tuesday, I will show you what kind of awards I received, if any, for those items. <laughs> I want to welcome all my new viewers. Um, I've noticed a few new subscribers. I've seen a couple of shout outs and I'm pretty surprised at that. Um, I will also add to um, the end of the footage my shout out for some of the new ones that I have been watching. I've been watching quite a few new uh, gals and guys and so I'm kind of excited about that. Um, a lot of them do knit and crochet, although quite a few of them do just crochet. Um, you know, I'm a bi-stitchwool person myself, so I guess I could say tri-stitchwool because I also loom knit. Does that count? I don't know. I tat. I don't know. Quad stitchwool? Stitchwool? Um, when I do tat, I prefer to use a needle as opposed to the bobbins, although I don't mind the shuttle bobbins. Um, it's just they're a little harder to manage for me. Um, a lot of that has to do with the arthritis in my hands. So the needle comes in handy and I find you can do almost everything with the needle that you can do with these shuttles. I don't have a whole lot of finished items because they're all at the fair. Um, do you have a few finished items? <laughs> and those are mostly baby hats. Because coming up, I believe it's August the 16th is Little League Week in uh, Williamsport, Pennsylvania. And of course, we're, we have a team that won the state championship here in uh, Lock Haven, so yay! Uh, Keystone, they won the state champion, but the hospital has asked us to make baseball hats, baby hats for that week, so that when babies are delivered, they'll get something that's a baseball hat, and this is what we've come up with, and uh, you can use this on a knitted hat or a crocheted hat, basically after you're finished, you're going to just do the stitching up along the one side and down the other and it's just a v-stitch it's real easy embroidery stitch um, not too hard I was looking for buttons that said like state champion because I thought those would be wonderful so there's state champion in Pennsylvania but I haven't found any yet although I have found baseball buttons but you know I want something that says state champions. I know I'm picky. Um, I am going to look a little later on Etsy, see if I can find something along that lines. Hopefully they can get it to me quick so I can sew those all on. Uh, that is it for finished items. Um, the only other items that I have been working on has been the uh, homeless mat and a lot of that has been cutting and stringing them together. Um, I've done about an hour's worth of crochet. It's probably about two and a half feet. I've got a, quite a ways to go because they need to be six feet. And then you got to go all the way around them. If you've seen the video on that. I don't know if you have or not. I hope you went and looked at it and thought about maybe possibly doing that for a project. Other than that, I don't have anything else going on. I'm not really working on anything else but the hats and the uh, mats for the homeless. So, 
I do have a couple of acquisitions. This was something I went to my Walmart to get an item. And this is scuba. My Walmart has never carried scuba in the past that I've seen. Or maybe I just went in there when it was there. I saw it. I got it. <laughs> I've been wanting to work with it. It's such pretty. Some of these new acquisitions were just things that were dropped off at the at our hospital for the naughty knitters. Um, so I do pick things up here and there when it happens um, because it does help with a lot of uh, items for later on for charity. Um, these were two well-loved used skeins of yarn. You can see how old this is. This is um, price on it was a dollar nineteen so it's a little vintagey um, but those those will come in handy for when we're doing the Christmas hats this one will as well and it is a red heart super sport and that one came from Woolworth for a dollar forty nine when a lot of people are older and family members clean out their houses. Many times they will donate to the hospital because we always have a request for yarn. So, um, I did pick up a couple of skeins of most of, I believe these two are kind of an off-white and this is white. Um, baby hats, you know, works great for baby hats. Dig down here. A blue and a pink. Um, if you know how to soften yarn later on, even some of the coarsest yarns can be used because they soften up real nice with um, hair conditioner. Yes, hair conditioner. Let them soak. Um, squeeze them out. Let them air dry or plop them in the dryer for a few minutes on air. And that works great. Now this is a really old one, 94 cents, Wonder Art. It's a real pretty green. It's called Light Spring. I thought that would be cute to make some frog hats. You know, I'm kind of crazy like that. And then here's another one of those 94 cent and off-white. They come in handy. I did also, this past week, got light periwinkle. I have a pattern for an Eeyore that I'm going to do, Hamagurumi. Now that I've got two under my belt, I'm thrilled to death loving the Amagurumi. And I'm learning to say the word. That's a hard word. It's just all there is to it. Now, I'm going to bring this one up here, only because it's a little difficult to manage down there. I was told these were beads that were donated, and I can tell you first off what I'm seeing are buttons. And this lady has a lot of old vintage buttons, and a lot of them are plain, but I can use quite a few of them for when I'm making baby sweaters or putting on hats to decorate. Ooh, now we get to the beads. A lot of beads. And there are some safety pins and some looks like uh, pin backings in there to make brooches. I do a lot of beadwork, so lots of times people know that I do beadwork. They'll donate their older beads to me. These are a couple of beads, pin backings, and a whole lot of pins. I don't know if I can use very many of these. Um, I will go through those later on, pick out what I can use. The rest will go to... Um, scraps and skeins. 
Therapy is going great. I tease, I call it my torture session. Because while it's happening, it doesn't feel good. Get this out of the way. But um, it's going really well. I'm thrilled to death with it. It's working. I'm sleeping better at night. Yeah, sleeping better at night. Um, I did forget about this yarn. This is real pretty teal color, although the color on it says opal. It's a little more greenish in hue than what the camera's picking up. I don't know why the camera's picking it up as blue, but it's really a, a dark teal, almost um, a shade darker than the jade. Red Heart yarn. Tomorrow is our big fair. Um, it is also senior day. This is one day when I can get away and get in for a senior. Although I'm not old enough. I'm supposed to be 60 and older. But they let me in because of this. <laughs> and charge me the price to get in for that. Um, and tomorrow our hospital normally has a bingo once a month which you know I'm in charge of prizes with uh, my friend June and um, we don't have to provide any prizes for this bingo but I am gonna go and play bingo there they have a senior bingo which is kind of used as a recruitment tool to bring new people in a lot of people don't know about the senior um, program that's through the hospital and I'm afraid a lot of that is because of no advertising generally in the past when we have done things like we've had um, high tea for the ladies that were in the extended care of the nursing home uh, or you know with the red hats fancy hats those kind of things um, we've done that right around Christmas time and made little items like angels or you know something small that they can have um, and we've had a high tea and we serve them tea and we serve them cookies tea you know the whole nine yards we've done that in the past we always have a write-up in the paper we've not had write-ups in the paper for quite a few years um, and I won't go into why but um, those write-ups oftentimes let people know that we're in the community we're doing things and it brings people out in the past we've done things like make hats and then felt them make purses and felt them we have always in the past made um, bags for the cancer society to put all the brochures and items in for the ladies to come in for their chemo and radiation um, we haven't been doing a lot of that. The chemo caps, I continue to make chemo caps and take them up um, simply because of my mother with her cancer and I think it's a great cause. So I, you know, generally will make hats, scarves, take them up, especially in the winter time. A lot of the ladies like those. Um, some of the uh, guys and gals that use those enjoy them year-round and yes I do make for guys and gals um, believe it or not men get cancer so <laughs> you know as ladies many times we just think that you know breast cancer is it but there are a lot of type of cancers that all kinds of people have so um, the only other thing is I have got to this afternoon I've got to measure baby hats that have been made I have noticed that they keep getting smaller and smaller and I believe that a majority of them will go for probably maybe a one to two pounder uh, because of size and uh, circumference. A normal newborn baby's head size is normally 13 to 14 inches. The average size is 13 and a half inches. Um, circumference diameter of the head um, 
and the way that you judge that is when you take the hat you'll flatten it like this measure from here to here you know side to side that will give you an idea of how large the hat's going to be and then double that and that generally gives you an idea of how big a baby the hat will fit onto of course crochet stretches a little bit knit stretches a lot more um, I prefer to crochet because it's faster and get done you know I do 10 or 12 hats in a day easily without breaking a sweat for knitting a hat it takes me a little longer it takes me about two hours to knit a baby hat which is fine if I have that time to sit down watch TV or whatever but I don't always have that kind of time so like I said I've got to measure these hats to see what sizes they will fit because the hospital that we're donating them to the birthing center they do not normally do preemies they might do maybe a four to five pounder um, and they don't always keep them many times they will send them up to uh, Danville where Geisinger the Janet Weiss Hospital for Children is at because they do not want the liability of having some of the issues that come up with uh, smaller babies they do not even deliver if they know that your baby is going to be premature even if you come in they will life flight you out to Danville which you know I'm kinda surprised at um, one of the things I'd asked when they first came in is what level nursery they were I was told they were a level 2 nursery I worked in a level 2 nursery um, NICU and uh, we often went into a um, having three pounders two pounders which we would care for until we could get them into a, uh, what we call a better bed so that um, they can get the absolute care they need with the neonatologist uh, three to pound four pound babies many times can be taken care of in a regular NICU nursery I don't and I did not ask if they had a NICU at this hospital probably should have I don't think they do because they're from the tour that we took their main thing is for the baby to stay in the room with mom and dad with the exception of that one time during 24 hours when they have to do some things testing those kind of things um, many nurses will take them out of the nursery uh, I mean out of the rooms not always um, some parents get a little upset when they see some of the things that we're doing um, you know because it, it is hard to watch your baby crying when someone's poking the hill or their toe to get blood for you know the bilirubin so, that is hard to watch but as a nurse you know I've done it in the past um, and I have often asked the parent if they want to stay in the room or do they want me to take them back to the nursery uh, it's certain hospitals have rules where they have to come back to the nursery once each 24 hour period some do not um, so I you know a lot of it just depends on what the hospital rules are their policies and procedures so they cannot use a lot of hats that are smaller than five pounds um, four to five pounds and like I said many of these hats that I've been getting lately are really small I don't know if the folks have realized that they've gone down a hook size for some reason they think the baby's heads are tiny um, because you know they're measuring like eight inches that's like a one pound baby you know and I keep telling them if it fits on a grape fruit it will fit a baby um, some babies are about the size of an orange most are a grapefruit 
I don't know. Sometimes I wonder. Um, the only other thing that I have been doing, I've been doing a lot of embroidery. I was doing some stitch out samples for someone who's ordered a quilt. And the quilt has quite a few uh, embroidered squares in it. I'm hoping that, and I haven't asked the person, I'm hoping that once I've given it away that he'll allow me to post pictures. But that's probably not going to be until December. You know, it's a Christmas present. So maybe in January I'll be able to show that. Um, that's about it. That's all I got to say. Everybody have a great day. Remember, choose to be kind. And I'll catch you later. Bye.